Hello again, I'm Junus, and this will be my second video uh, called Designing with Optimization. And the optimization process is going to be uh, split up into different parts. Uh, but the reason for doing all of them is line of sight reduction. Because cutting down line of sight will allow you to create wide open areas uh, and then just block it off and then cre create another wide open area. Like if you have a five control point map, you will be able to use really big open areas for all your points and then still uh, cut down the sidelines and not tax people's computers too hard. And the methods we will be discussing, or I will be talking about, is Dawson Hints, the Massive Wall Approach, Height Difference and Path Layout methods. And the best map to showcase the Dawson Hints approach, in my opinion, is the Granary, especially this uh, central part here, the uh, first cap, or the central rather, I'll undo that, the central point down here, and then the second point in either direction is up here. And this is the purple color showing how the walls themselves look. These are the solids. And the reason why this works so well is that you can never draw a line, and I will actually try to draw a line, between this corner here, oh, whoops, and there, as well as those corners. As you will see here, the, eventually, the corners here will be blocking off visibility, which means that you will never be able to see from the number one area up to the number two area here or the number three area which means that you can have a really detailed area uh, around the second point and you can still have the same amount of detail up here because the players will never be able to see both of them at once unless you stand in exactly the uh, the part here but you will still not be able to look at in all the directions at the same time and the right part is also really clever, because, like before, if you draw a line across here, it will put the right part of the map here uh, quite outside the map, because um, if you make a hint all the way across here, anything on the left side of this line, um, in the top and bottom, will never be able to see uh, anything from these parts at all. Meaning that you, if you stand in the middle here, you can see the top part or you can see the bottom part, uh, but never both at once. And the the next part of granary is really clever as well. Just like before, you have the walls in purple. And this, oops, I forgot one. You can draw a hint across here which means that uh, nothing out here will ever be able to see uh, the central part here and the, around the cap point. You can draw one there and one there. Um, I'm not sure about this right side really, but I... You know, I'm surprisingly bad at hints. But I think if you put an area portal in the door it will still work. Just like if you put hints across the top here, mm, you will be able to keep the the central stage here will never be able to see anything happening on the the first point which is on the top here. For the next approach it's the massive walls of Dust Bowl and the reason why this works so well is because if you put, you can put just a big wall all the way across here and you will never be able to see uh, all the way through it because this right path goes around the corner here. This is sort of bendy twisted way and the top is also leading to the two separate paths pointing towards the middle. And as you can see, the general 
number of routes is three, even though I suppose you'd have to count the ones in the middle as one, and then have another one uh, on the top of the stairs. So. Um, and this is actually used again on Dust Bowl on the later stage. Again, you have to go around. You can never see all the way through it, which means that if you see it from the top, you will always have solid walls blocking. Like if this is the the central wall, you will have. Uh, it's not super pretty, but hopefully you get the idea. How does it go? Something like this, I suppose. So the w the part we're looking towards is not really marked on the map because I draw like hell. Ah, forget that. Let's just remove it. Whoops. Ah, screw that. Let's just go to the next part. And if this is a building on the left side here. The reason why using buildings as uh, line of sight blockers is a bad idea is because if you make a building as tall as this one, assume that a player uh, is trying to jump up and he looks towards the top here, or over the top. If you use uh, just hints, you will be able to cover the area as long as players stay on the ground area on both sides, but as long as people can ever jump on, jump over the top here, they will have a really long sightline, being able to see over one or more of your walls. So if you have several stages after one another, they might be able to jump up here and see the middle point, which is a really bad thing. And if you use skybox brushes, uh, let's take the blue here, if you use a skybox brush, to block off the top of the house here. Uh, any player jumping up this high will see a hole in the wall here, uh, seeing the skybox through the solid wall, because where the skybox and the solid uh, touch each other, there will be a hole. The reason why it's so good to do it with displacements is because the, uh, the skybox brush will touch the no draw brush hidden behind the um, the displacement. So the hole in the wall be will be hidden behind a displacement which can be seen from both sides. You will still not be able to see players um, and other models and things uh, across this, but if you just jump up a short bit and then have some sort of uh, higher walls and stuff, you will be able to better recreate the illusion of Open, wall, open worlds and longer sightlines even without actually having them. And if you try to jump up on, on on Dust Bowl, you will probably hit the the skybox before uh, before you're able to see across it. But in some places, you're actually able to get up high enough to see that there are no models on the other side of the displacement wall. So that is the massive wall approach, just in buildings and displacements. And the next example is just bowl again, but the height differences instead. And the theory behind this is like the right side of the uh, the granary. Uh, I can take it up again. Uh, let's hide that one. Yeah, like the right side here. The theory is that if you can make a straight line cutting off one or other, the other of the sides. Ah, go away. Yeah, whatever. So the theory here is that the ground level, I want a round painting, here, will go far uh, or low enough that you can put a solid wall brush up here and then draw a hint across which makes the num the one never be able to see uh, see the two, 
and this it works in all dimensions. Uh, Granary had it on the right side, you can do it on the left side, you can also do it like here with the lower part, or you could do it with the, the higher part, as long as you have solids, not uh, displacement themselves. Um, unable to see across like so, but pretty. Uh, the height differences will work as well. I don't really remember any example which uses this uh, the lower part, but you can probably find it if you look hard enough. And the next example is what I call path layout optimization, which is just creating a fairly narrow path that's leading from one point to the next one. Uh, one point is here, two point is up there. So if you just hint across the corners here, you will be able to create a really optimized um, central stage just because the sidelines are never long enough in the first case and since you will en eventually end up in the really spammy corner in the bottom here you will mostly be seeing the central uh, the second stage and everything on the first stage or rather anything beyond this oops wrong layer again anything beyond this corner will be hidden so as long as you keep your models uh, every, anywhere between the left side here and this part, you will be fine. And then you can have as detailed a last stage as you want. And there's actually more detailed, especially on the top left side here, than uh, most people have seen. Just like the top part of the right side house here, the second or third story of that building. If you jump into the game and take a look at it. You probably never even paid attention to it before. Just like the there's a cart on a uh, train up here. And another map that uses this sort of approach is Badwater, which is really zoomed out on this picture, but this is what the stage looked like. Um, I wasn't sure it was gonna, was gonna include like the, the buildings here, but the general layout is still the same. There's a big first stage. Uh, it looks quite a kind of bad here, but it's because it's so hard to take level overview screenshots of maps with big uh, height differences. But there's a really big open stage one, and then there's a narrow. Uh, I don't know how the hints and things look, but. There's a really narrow corner here, just like this narrow corner up here. So it's uh, open area, it's close all the way, and then the the last cap is open again. Um, I guess you could say the, uh, the big area here is open as well, but there's not much, generally not much gameplay going on in the back alley. So this bottom part here is also a really really detailed part of a map that really few people ever pay attention to because the only important thing there is the health kit and once you take it you want to look back up towards the roof where all the action is so that is uh, what I was going to talk about today the uh, I can hide the layers and take it back so there's the doors and hints approach of granary. There is the uh, I type or I write like hell, but you get the point. Uh, granary massive wall approach, which is used on dust bowl, and height differences also on dust bowl. I'm not sure whether the uh, the ground actually goes far enough um, to be able to clip it on dust bowl, but the theory is still there. And then there is the path layout of bad water and dust bowl again. In short, pay attention to <laughs> what dust bowl looks like because it uses a lot of good optimization techniques. Over and out.